Chachez manger. Nous avons ces beaux petits de salines. Je dis à nous pas qu'à quitter. Aucun troupe étranger a vu notre vie assassiner mon pays. Au péril de. Six months after pledging support to the Kenyan-led mission in Haiti, Jamaica is sending a first wave of troops. The Jamaican president announced that only 24 military and police personnel would land in Haiti on Thursday and lay the groundwork for further deployments. Haiti is the example of what could happen if states do not take the problem seriously and put in place the measures and resources necessary to bring the problem under control. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing fine. Now there are news that Jamaica is sending troops, police troops, to a Haiti for a peacekeeping mission. And there are so many reactions about this. People have been talking, this has just happened now. So I want us to watch this video then have a quick discussion at the end of it. Thank you so much. In March, Jamaica formally pledged 200 personnel for the UN-backed mission, but the deployment has faced setbacks. It's led by Kenya, which so far has sent 400 police officers out of a total pledge of 1,000. Working with Haitian police, the Kenyan officers are working towards taking back key sites that have fallen under the control of gangs, including the airports and seaports. But almost three months into the mission, the security situation has little improved. Now. We've seen Jamaica is the latest country to send their troops or police to Haiti for the peacekeeping mission. Now, I once did a video and many, many Jamaicans came out and said, why is Africa interfering uh, with Haiti? Now, the Haiti crisis has actually now caught the attention of so many people around the globe. Gangs are in control of 80% of the capital, with violence having spread to other areas across the country. The UN says more than 3,000 people have been killed from January to May, and the crisis has left more than half a million people homeless. Part of the problem is funding. The international mission is expected to cost around $600 million per year, but only $85 million have been pledged by countries so far. On a visit to Haiti last week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken urged other countries to provide more financial support and called for transitional authorities to move quickly towards democratic elections. Now, this is where we've, we've seen so many countries are going to Haiti, maybe thinking they have the perfect solution to that. Now, we've seen countries in Africa, including uh, Benin, Chad, and Kenya, that have already sent their troops for the peacekeeping mission. Then, we've seen Antigua doing that, we've seen Bangladesh doing that, and now Jamaica has joined them. But the <coughs> question still remains. When going there, are they going to bring the absolute change to the people of Haiti? Are Haitians going to feel their presence? Are they going to settle the political instability that has been, been facing this country for the longest time? Now, we've seen the gangs in Haiti that are making several demands on their government and anyone else siding with the government. Now, the Haiti gangs, you might actually think they are bad but I went through the list of whatever they want. Come Thursday, Jamaica will be sending troops to Haiti to restore order amidst worsening tensions spiraled by gang activities in the country. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made that announcement at a special post-cabinet press briefing at Jamaica House this morning. Kelisha Williams was there. So for the second consecutive week, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has made a special appearance to the post-cabinet press briefing. Now there was high anticipation from Monday afternoon when the office of the Prime Minister issued a statement saying there would have been a special post-cabinet press briefing here today instead of the usual Wednesday sitting. Now Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced that Jamaica will be sending troops to Haiti, 20 members of the JDF and 4 members of the JCF.
none of the countries that have made commitments have deployed all at once. It's not practical, it's not possible. Uh, preparations have to be made in the host country, and so as those preparations are made, then and the possibility of scaling up happens, then we will, on our side, fulfill all our commitments. So this is a start to what we intend to do, and as the situation in Haiti is prepared for our presence, we will deploy. We also asked for a comment on calls by the opposition for parliament to be convened early to discuss the integrity commission reports. Essentially in cabinet, we didn't discuss that. That was not discussed at cabinet at all. In terms of the tabling of reports, that's a matter for the speaker of the house. I'll have more on these issues in primetime news this evening at seven. To stand before you this afternoon in this land of Haiti with this men who have stepped forward as ambassadors of peace. We know, God, that you are the author of peace. Peace that surpasses all human understanding. We pray, Heavenly Father, over this land of Haiti. We pray for the children, the men and women, the government of this land. As we participate in a small way, as agents, of peace. We want to pray, Heavenly Father, that you, the order of peace, shall bring peace and stability to this country. That you shall defeat evil people, criminals, and gangs. We pray, Heavenly Father, that as these men from Kenya and other countries, as they work for the peace of this country, you will give them success. You will give them wisdom. You will give them firepower to overcome. Father, we pray, and I pray for these men and women who have committed themselves to be agents of peace. I pray for their families. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will protect them. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give them success and that they will stabilize this country. And in a very short time, they will come back home after they hand over the responsibility of securing this nation to the Haitian police and Haitian security. Father, we want to pray against witchcraft and against idol worship. We want to pray against the forces of evil that have strangled this land that you will release. Report now, we all know that uh, hunger has been striking Haiti for the longest time. The prices, food prices have been increasing by 21% and you can imagine. So, so many people can't even afford a living in Haiti right now because everything is at its rise. And so many people are feeling like they are losing it. The country is losing it. The government has done little to curb all these messes that are uh, affecting uh, Haitians and most of them believe that it is time it is actually time the government to be put responsible and something special needs to be done maybe a transition of a, a whole government needs to be done now the gangs in Haiti are just demanding for whatever is good for the people now we know sometimes Change does not come at once. Change needs time, right? And we all believe that a change is a rest. However much, for a change to happen, there must be sacrifices that must be made. And you know that. Uh, Haitian gangs are actually demanding that the government be responsible for the hunger that is happening. Now, we know there was an earthquake that happened uh, in Haiti some days ago and it displaced around 810,000 people. You can imagine. And the gangs in Haiti, the whole crisis fighting with the government here and there has affected at least 30,000 families. Now, you can't know the magnitude. You can't know uh, the seriousness of whatever I'm saying about, I'm talking about, I mean, uh, 30,000 families is a way bigger number that can match maybe to 150,000 people. 
And you can imagine children, mothers have been affected by this. But the UN is busy on a, uh, on a peacekeeping mission instead of going back to the drawing board and actually tracing where all this began and maybe come out with a solution to this. That's whatever is needed. All these peacekeeping missions, these are very temporary solutions to whatever is happening in Haiti. So all Haitians, I, I know, and I believe I'm speaking for the biggest number of the people living in Haiti, they want a solution to this. They don't want uh, interim solutions. They don't want uh, things that are going maybe, maybe just to act on behalf of the solutions they want to see the impact of UN they want to see the impact of their neighbors now what is brotherhood I think countries in the Caribbean should come out and stand with Haiti it is time brothers and sisters let's not fight our own brothers now we've seen um, people have been talking about this now uh, the US France and all these big countries have talked about this and they are siding with the government. I'm not against the government of Haiti, but if it does everything right, if the people are dying, if the people have been displaced, what is more important than the people you are leading? If the people have been displaced by an earthquake, around 810,000 families. Now, it is, it is at this juncture that the government should take keen interest of helping the people, its citizens, because that's whatever matters a lot. It doesn't matter when there is peace. The People's National Party, PNP, is calling for the parliament to be urgently reconvened. This in light of what the party says is the leaked Integrity Commission report to, the, to a media house. The PNP considers this a serious breach of parliamentary protocol and public trust. It says this also raises an alarm about potential breaches of confidentiality and the erosion of public confidence in democratic institutions. The Integrity Commission in recent days submitted three reports to the Speaker of the House, the Deputy Speaker and the Clerk of the Houses of Parliament. Parliament is expected to reconvene next Tuesday when these reports will be tabled. And moving to the Caribbean nation of Haiti, troops from the United States are reportedly in Haiti building barracks and other facilities. This comes ahead of the deployment of about 1,000 police officers from Kenya to the troubled nation. A United Nations-backed multinational force has been tasked with helping Haiti's police rein in criminal gangs and is being led by the East African nation of Kenya. Now Caribbean media, media says that American troops are among the civilian contractors who landed in Haiti just last week. And the contractors are consulting on behalf of the Pentagon while also helping secure the airport in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. They're also mapping out an area where the Kenyan troops will stay during the peacekeeping mission. Now reports say standing up the military base is likely to take six weeks and that Kenyan troops are expected in Haiti later this month. Now, this is all happening amid the backdrop of Kenyan President William Ruto's visit to the United States. President Ruto will be hosted by President Biden while marking the 60th anniversary of U.S. and Kenya's diplomatic relations. The development comes days after Haiti's transitional council picked Fritz Belazaire as the new prime minister. Now, the criminal gangs who launched coordinated attacks in February still retain control of 90 percent of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince. And notably, the international security mission to help Haiti was first announced by the United Nations seven months ago. However, it has faced multiple setbacks as Kenyan opposition lawmakers and the courts objected to sending troops to Haiti. Now, Kenya's police officers have been given the green light. And besides Kenya, more than half a dozen other countries, including the Bahamas, Bangladesh, Barbados, Benin, Chad, and Jamaica, have also pledged to send personnel to the peacekeeping mission in Haiti. After many delays and setbacks, it appears the international mission is finally on track. Still, the criminal gangs appear undeterred by the developments and are clearly dug in. Only time will tell 
if the transition council can solve this vexing problem and eventually peace the matters most when there is no peace and that's when the government should intervene stop going around looking for interim solutions look for permanent solutions to the problems and atrocities that are facing the people of Haiti. I'll advise all those including countries from Africa, Kenya, Benin and Chad stop sending in troops. If you're in a financial position that you can help the government of uh, Haiti to help its people because the people who have been displaced they don't have homes, they can't afford to eat they are not going to school, the children are not going to school, there is no peace, all these things. Sending troops won't help with this. The only thing that is going to help the people of Haiti is permanent solutions. And one, if the people are dying out of hunger, if the living standards are high, why can't you help this government so that they can come out or up with so many policies, with some policies that can help reduce the cost of living. I believe that when people are are not hungry, you know, a hungry uh, population is an angry population. So the people of Haiti are very angry at the moment because they are hungry. So this is the time, brothers and sisters, to come up and help those that are suffering in Haiti because children's mothers, minors are suffering at the expense of political instability. All these guns, maybe they'll give up one day. They won't continue with their demands because we've seen peacekeeping missions and so many troops are going there. But what? What next? The people continue dying with hunger People have no shelter. People no, have no homes because of the pandemic that happened. And all the people are just quiet. The Caribbean is quiet. Jamaica is quiet. Hmm? Barbados is quiet. St. Kitts. We all need to come out in our numbers. Let's support the brothers and sisters on the other side. They need your support more than my support. I'm so far away, miles away. Let's, let's see whatever can be done. I wish the governments of these Caribbean countries could come out and merge together so that they can come out with policies, with aid that could help the Ahitians to survive for the time being while looking out for the permanent solutions. These interim solutions of peacekeeping won't help. They help, yes. You will have peace while hungry. It doesn't make sense. Some will say, yes, peace is needed. Absolutely. I agree with you. But peace with, with hunger while children are dying out of hunger, when mothers can't afford to buy milk, when they can't afford to go to the supermarket to shop because the prices have gone high by 21%. That's crazy, very insane. So this is the time, brothers and sisters. If you have anything, I wish someone could come out with a donation in, uh, in Haiti to help his or our own people. Because when the government fails, when there has been political instability, the political class has always been the elite of that country. It is time for other people to come and help for a permanent solution. They have been facing this solution for the longest time. I was doing my research and I realized that for almost 20 years, Ahiti has been having a crisis. It's not, it didn't start in 2021, as most people say. The political crisis started way back when I was still young or when I wasn't even born. So this is the time, brothers and sisters. Let's come out and help. Even if you can't donate, just give a shout out, encourage, talk something.
Thank you so much for having taken your time to watch this video. I appreciate so much. One love.